Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on creating a scrollable chart in Excel. So what we have here is I've got this spreadsheet with a list of kind of revenue by month. I would like to create a line graph to demonstrate the trend in revenue over the months, but that is quite a lot of data to display. I've got what I believe is 23 months there of information. It is my count at the bottom. And that's quite a lot for one chart to display. What I want to look at doing is adding a scroll bar to the chart and then creating the chart with only five months visible at any given time. So there's great clarity to the chart and a user can interact with it by using the scroll bar to scroll through the months. Now the chart will be dynamic, it'll be interactive, and it's a fantastic technique for Excel dashboards where you're going to have a limited amount of space to place your charts and add in form controls like scroll bars create that special functionality where you can display a load of information in that limited space and also make it uh, interactive for those that will be using it. So I've got my, you know, my large list of data there. I've also got this other tab called Charts, where it's kind of half prepared for what we're going to create a chart from. And I want to create a chart from a range of cells here. This is going to be. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? But a, a more condensed version of that. So that's where all the raw data is. The chart will use this as the source. Now to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is type number one in cell A2. The reason for that will become clearer as this tutorial progresses. But that cell is containing uh, the row number that the scroll bar is going to use. So when a user scrolls, uh, the chart, this value is going to constantly be changing and we're going to have th the data source use that so it's moving through the rows of data. For now it's just going to store number 1, I could put any number in there between 1 and 23, um, I'm going to have number 1 in there, why not? And then a lot of the power here is going to come from the index function which is what we're going to put in now. Starting from cell A4, I want to use the index function. Now, if you've never used this function before, please check out some of the function tutorials at computergargar.com. Index is a fantastic formula of Excel. It really does create some genius uh, for you. Given our explanation at the moment, it says that the job of index is to return a value from a specified row and column. Now this is better than what it sounds, but um, what we're going to ask it to do, if I put in an opening bracket, is when it asks for the array, it says, where is the data that you want me to return the value from? Well, the data for month, I mean the column for month here, is on this all data sheet, and all the months are in this range here. A4 to A26. Now as I select all of that range and I can see it appearing in the formula bar above, I'm going to press my F4 key on the keyboard, my F4 function key, to put dollar signs in there and make an absolute reference. And then I'm going to remove the dollar sign from before the 4. I want that row number 4 to be relative and the rest of the reference to be fixed. This is because back on the other sheet I'm going to copy the formula to the other four cells of this little five row data source and I need that row number to move to five to six to seven I need it to be flexible. After that reference I'm going to put a comma in the only other mandatory bit of information is to say what row number you'd like to return. That information is the number we typed in cell A2, which I'm also going to press F4 and fix. 
um, whatever row number is mentioned there. So to begin with row 1. I'm not going to specify a column number because I've only selected the array as one column. Only column A is there, so it can only return from one column. It is unnecessary to mention anything else. I'm going to close and bracket enter and look at copying that down. So hopefully provide a, a better example of what I'm doing. I don't know how much sense this is making at the moment. But look, here we can see it's returning the first five months of data at the moment. But it's dependent on what this says. If I change that to 3, it returns all the information beginning from row 3. So it's returned need 5. Yeah, so this row number is the row to start from in these 5. At the moment I'm changing that by typing. That is what the scroll bar is going to change when it's in. The reason for this relative nature here is so that when it moves to the next one down that changes to 5 and returns the first row again so now it's the first row but from the starting from A5 so you effectively return A5 if that makes sense hopefully it does that is why we wanted to remove the dollar sign I'm getting some green triangles here warning me about errors I can ignore them with this little smart tag that appears they're not doing any harm but are pretty ugly and then what I'm going to do is copy that formula and I'm going to stick it in the cell next door and change them to B's. There are other ways I could do that, but that will work for now and copy that down. So I have the exact same thing going on. Let's get rid of my errors. Oops, that didn't happen. Click on the correct tag, please, Alan. Uh, copy them down and now it's doing it for column B. So you know now it's oops, uh, grabbing it from the revenue column. So I've prepared the data source that our chart is going to use and I've got this cell that's kind of powering it all with a row number. At the moment there's no uh, dynamic nature to it, I have to type, but there will be with scrollbar. The index function doing some of the magic here. Okay, next step is to create the chart. I'm going to select the chart's data source, which is on the chart sheet range A3 to B8, and I'm going to insert a line graph. In it goes, beautiful looking line graph, which if I want to take things a little bit further, I can provide a little bit more formatting to this. Um, Weld is your oyster with some chart formatting here, do as you wish. So a few quick examples, my plan is to remove that legend, click on it, press delete, legend gone, not necessary to tell me revenue is blue, I think I've got that. Value axes on the left, I'm going to click on that, delete that, grid lines in the middle, whoops, I'm going to click on a grid line, delete, get rid of them. And then I'm going to go to the Layout tab. I'm going for Data Labels, and I'm going to ask it to show in uh, above each point. So I'm going to finish with there. Obviously, loads of formatting. Add your own personal touch to it, what you think is best. I've done a few quick examples there. But we've got the five months from our data source displayed on a line graph, which looks the way we want it to look. If I change this row number in here now, that is changing. Let's move to October because it's using this data and index is returning it. It's all coming into play. Now the step we've all been waiting for is to add the scroll bar to the chart. This is what it's all about. And for this I'm going for the developer tab. If you do not see the developer tab on this ribbon, just right mouse click anywhere on your ribbon, customize the ribbon, and check the developer box over here. If you are using Excel 2007, you'll have to go to what they call your office button. You'll have this orb, this circle over here. From there, you're going to Excel options, which will be around here, sort of space. From here, I think they call this popular in 2007. 
but there'll be, I think it's the third one, the third checkbox, to turn on the developer tab. Anyway, Google it, you'll find how to do that. Once you've got a developer tab, we're going for insert and to scroll bar form control. Second row, third column in that menu. Giving it a click will now give you the potential of drawing it on your sheet. And I'm going to click and drag and draw a scroll bar. I could always move and resize it afterwards if it's not quite right. For all intents and purposes for now, I'll just dump that on there. I've now got a scroll bar just below my chart. With it selected, I'm going straight to this properties button on that developer tab to look at some of the properties for the control. And we need to answer these questions. The first question is what the current value of the scroll bar is. And I'm going to change that to 1. The current value is 1. What is the minimum value that the scroll bar can have? Minimum value is 1. It's what it is at the moment. It's the lowest it can go. Maximum value. I should have looked at this just prior. Uh, actually, I did deny. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was 23. 23 months. could always come back and change this after. Maximum number is 23. You may need to change that in the future. Uh, you cannot reference a cell in here. Yeah, this has to be uh, an integer or decimal. Uh, value. Incremental change. When somebody clicks the like left arrow or right arrow, how how large an incremental change would you like to make? I'm going to leave it as one, so it can move. A click of an arrow would move one month. That makes sense to me. Page change. What kind of incremental change would happen if somebody clicked a space inside the scroll bar? I'm going to change it to five because I'm shown five months on screen at a time. When somebody hits the middle of the scroll bar somewhere, it's going to jump five months. If they hit an arrow, it's going to jump one month. Cell link, when people are clicking the arrows on the middle of the scroll bar, what cell should it put this information in? What cell should it put the current value in? That cell is A2. That is what that cell is all about. A user interaction with the scroll bar will affect the value in there. That in turn will affect what the index function is returning and therefore the chart. And that's how it's all happening. If I click OK, then changes will be saved. If I click outside of the scroll bar, it becomes active. So now, if I use my right arrow, every time I click it, it is moving one month along and I can see both the number in here and the data on our sheet changing and same for the left arrow September 2011 to Jan 2012 if I click anywhere in the middle of the scroll bar it jumps five months so now it's Feb 12 to June 12 July 12 to November 12 back one so we can interact with this now We've got a fantastic scrollable chart. Whoop, don't make a mistake like that. <laughs> um, absolutely fantastic. Oh, that was a bad month for me there. Um, let's open that up with them hashes. Fantastic. Okay, last step I might make is maybe you don't want this value to be visible. Yeah, there's so many ways of handling that. I might decide to put that information on a different sheet entirely. Probably on this sheet would make more sense, actually. Um, for now, my plan is to change the font colour to white so that it does exist. I'm just deciding as a cheeky way of not making it visible. Yeah, it might make sense to, to lock that cell down and protect it. You know, I, I could go on. But to keep things easy for now, I'm going to make sure it's not visible. I don't want to confuse people by displaying a number. People don't need to see that. But they do want the functionality of our very cool chart. Oh, yes. You can always go back and format that control by right-clicking. 
I've demonstrated the uh, properties button on the developer tab. We can do this by right clicking and formatting the control to. And we can change any of these elements should we need to at a later date if you did want to change the cell link uh, or indeed the maximum value which is a, something that you might be looking at changing in there. Fantastic, but that is our scrollable chart in Excel. Thank you for watching. Please check out some of our other tips and tricks at computergargard.com.